Growing up, none of us ever aspired to cars like these. The posters on our walls were Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but most of us are not ever going to be able to afford to own them, let alone drive them. Well, luckily, there is a place now where you can drive them. We're at Speed Vegas. It's a place where you can come and drive these exotics as fast as you're comfortable. So we're gonna take them and compare them and see if they're worth desiring. And while we're here, they have trophy trucks, so let's get airborne. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. My eight-year-old self is freaking out. My 19-year-old self cannot believe that I'm in these cars. So when you come to Speed Vegas, order up the Italian's package. That's what you want. <laughs> Start up the Italian music. I know what you're thinking. Okay, guys, you've become a supercar show like everybody else. I know you're saying that, but here's the reason this is valid. These are supercars that you're probably dreaming about driving. We do it too. You can come do it, which is why we're here. Ferrari, in spite of all of their amazing racing history, became most famous with most people because of Magnum P.I. and his 308 Ferrari. My parents weren't car enthusiasts, that's how I learned about Ferrari. From that progression, beginning with that mid-engine V8, we get to this car, the 488. It's even more interesting because it's the first time that this mid-engine V8 Ferrari has been a turbo. I like the seating position better in the Lamborghini. I can't see as much through the A-pillars here, but that's by virtue of the shape. You drive supercars, and what do you want to drive? You want to drive the Ferrari and the Lamborghini, and how do they compare? Well, we're really children like you are, so we're going to look at both of them. This is the rear-wheel drive version. This is the 580. It is two-wheel drive, and those are only going to the good wheels. First, biggest difference is uh, I am too big for this car. Now, without a helmet, uh, you know, cruising down the street showing how awesome I am because I have a Lamborghini, I might just fit. Getting on a racetrack wearing a helmet, Sasquatch is back and he's got a Lamborghini. Both Todd and I will have instructors the entire time, and that's part of the point. That's the great thing about coming to Speed Vegas. You remember when you were in driver training and they had the extra brake pedal over on the passenger side? They have that brake pedal, but this is a little better than driver's ed. By the way, are you noticing the cones? Every cone's a different color, so you can actually tell from the cones exactly where you need to be on this track. This is a 2017 Ferrari 488 GTB. It's got 660 horsepower, and this thing is quick. We've been told many opinions about these cars, endless stats about these cars. Twin turbo, but what's interesting is you have to really beat on it to start extracting some stuff out of it. It feels slower everywhere else than the Lamborghini. I can't believe I'm saying both of these cars together, but not only are they Italian, but they've both got the paddles on the column. And I've maintained for a while that my favorite is paddles on the column. All the cars here have seven speed dual clutch gearboxes. They require you to use the paddles. You could put any of these cars in auto and let it do it for itself. But these guys here, and they'll talk you through actually using the paddles so that you feel involved with the car. On the Ferrari feels a lot more like a street car than the Huracan. This car, you gotta force it a little bit more. Now, is it does it have bad braking? No, I'm not saying it has bad braking, but it is quite a difference when you get in the two back to back. Ooh, getting a little bit of tire squeal. The 488 uses its traction control systems based on your steering input. The more input that you have, the less the car is going to give to you unless everything is turned off. So you've got to work your way up to not only your comfort level, but your skill 
because it isn't turbo lag coming out of corners. It's actually the traction control system that's not letting you apply full throttle. Both these car companies straddle the line of having these cars being luxurious and yet there's still race car bones underneath and they let that come out depending on the mode you're in. On no other car that I have driven so far have I felt such a difference in sport mode going all the way up to race. It's amazing to feel the car give you power as you unwind. The Ferrari has a precision and immediacy and the Lamborghini is a little more flamboyant Italian. This Ferrari really moves as a unit. You can feel the precision of the steering wheel, and then the back never feels out of control. It feels very precise. A little bit of slide for you. is entirely different. I'm in a 2017 Lamborghini Huracan. This is the LP580. That means 580 horsepower. It means rear wheel drive. But it also means lighter weight. The Ferrari is about 3,200 and change. This one is just over 3,000 pounds and I can feel the difference. on the Lamborghini grip harder and sooner than the Ferrari could ever hope to do. I have to do about half the brake pressure in the Lamborghini to get the same amount of braking. If you jump from one to the other, you're gonna over brake all over the place. On the Huracan, I was expecting a heavier feeling car. It's so rev happy. My perception coming into this car was that V10s don't spool up quite as quickly. The way this car makes power is so much smoother, and I like it. And Lamborghini isn't doing the Ferrari thing, where the amount of steering input dictates how much it will let you accelerate out of a corner. The Huracan rotates very differently than the Ferrari. In fact, much more extreme. The front end of the Ferrari feels more delicate, but the back end isn't going to come around. That great rear wheel drive rotation that you're kind of expecting in the Ferrari is here in the Huracan. The Ferrari lets you get away with a lot, and I'm wondering if that's due to the uh, clientele, to be honest. They, they want you to keep the Ferrari shiny side up, of course, so they've introduced so many little intrusive things, whereas I think Lamborghini lets it hang out quite a bit more. Mid-engine cars traditionally have a little bit of a sense of menace that they might bite if you get it wrong. The Huracan maintains that in this rear-wheel drive configuration. The Ferrari feels a little bit more like a front-engine car in that it is going to forgive you if you do something stupid. This Huracan feels more mid-engine than the Ferrari does. The Ferrari clearly is defending you. This car is gonna, if you wanna be a bonehead, sure, we'll be a bonehead. I'm coming to a conclusion. The 488, it's a special car, but the Lamborghini is kinda angry. tradition where I pick the oddball. This is my car. This is more me. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Protection for whatever you drive.
So this is not something that I really signed up for. Honestly, I, I didn't come to Speed Vegas to drive a trophy truck. Now, these are purpose built in the trophy truck style for the folks at Speed Vegas, but they have done uh, the mid 400 in these. I didn't expect to be chucking myself off of a jump today, but uh, you know what? Hey, I'm here and they offer it. So uh, <laughs> let's see how this goes. Doing an orientation lap in a trophy truck. They run you through the race line telling you what part of the track to be on, what part to not do. <laughs> I'm really excited though. There's also the feeling that I might be good at this. I might suck at this. I don't know. I've got to be from first into third by the time I hit the second jump, but I don't know what the speeds are going to be like. I, I'm, I'm ready though. This is it. <laughs> All right, I got to come off the gas at the top of the jump. So this is essentially a mid-engine truck. You get your mid-engine 70% of your weight in the rear. Load up the front here. It's hard to see actually because of all well, the net and everything. I've kind of got to guess. Oh yeah, you can feel the weight shift. I mean, all the weights in the back. These trucks weigh about 4,000 pounds. They have an old Mustang V6 in them doing about 275 horsepower from a four liter V6. So not a whole lot of power and only three speeds. <laughs> I can fly! I can fly! I love this. This is so interesting and informative. Got to remember to lift while I'm in the air, right? This is absolutely like a little Miata or an FRS or something. It is a momentum truck. So you got to keep your momentum up. You want to only break a little bit, get the weight over the front wheels so that you can get your turn going so that the front bites. All right, so obviously real trophy trucks have way more horsepower to make go way faster, but this gives you the feeling of doing this. I've learned an entirely new racing line and I'm feeling all kinds of ball joints and suspension feelings I've never felt before. But you know what? When you toss it into a turn, I'm swimming around these corners. <laughs> I'm driving it like a go-kart. I'm left foot braking for everything. And then when I line it up and I've got confidence in the suspension, Bring it. Yeah, baby. You just gotta let yourself fly. It's an overflow of suspension travel. All of the weights behind you. Oh, it's slidey. And it's loose as hell. They want it to stay middle of the track. This is not an apex hunter because of course it has so much suspension travel. You don't want to unweight any of the wheels. So you try to stay pretty even on it. There we go. Load up the front. <laughs> I'm left, I'm like an idiot. There's more grip in the turns than I thought there was. Staying high on this banking. And I wanna go middle to right for this jump. The float is really disconcerting. It's so different than anything you're used to in a car because you're getting all four wheels completely off. You gotta embrace the slidey slidey of which there is a lot. Every action is exaggerated because there's so much loss in all of your inputs that you've got to be aggressive with it. You've got to embrace it and be bold. But it rewards bravery. It rewards chucking it in. You can learn to do this really easily. All you're feeling is the mechanical components and now I'm learning to trust my gear. It's just 
you and the tires. It's driving a waterbed. It is the completely bizarre experience because of, well, you're just not used to chucking yourself into the air. So apparently I'm doing well, especially for a newbie. There it is. If you have spine problems, I don't think I recommend this. Short of that, I really, really do. I never want this to end. I want to be out here for lap after lap. Until today, we've never been in these cars, but what I love is the first experience that we've had with both of them has been in a track situation. This is where these cars shine. This is what they're built for. And Speed Vegas has democratized the supercar world for the rest of us. It almost doesn't matter if you're doing a terrible line or not. You're doing what you feel comfortable with and the adrenal glands open, especially on the straightaway as they encourage you to give it as much gas as you'd like. And you're also thinking, that guy's not a very good driver. I could drive better than that. You know what? Come on out here to Speed Vegas and then talk the entire time. Best of luck to you, because I know how hard that is. My instructor, just to make things more confusing, is also named Paul. I've given him a challenge by asking him to A, not talk, which he's not used to, and B, he's using entirely hand signals, and they're awesome. I asked him, how many times have you done this? He said, I've never done it like this. It's driving me insane, but he's doing a phenomenal job. They've got the track design in such a way that it fulfills your need for speed, but it also gives you some technicality through these S corners because unless you work here, you're gonna do it wrong again. And so you're gonna wanna buy more laps to come back out and work on things. In Vegas, we all have our vices and you know, you come to Las Vegas to exercise those. Driving a Ferrari on a work day, folks, you could do that too. It's called vacation. My favorite thing about this is you can come do it. We, yeah. we aren't special, we just came and did this. Exactly. It's not like we drove around in some exotic location and we own well, these cars. Yeah. Trophy trucks and exotic cars, you yeah. don't have to buy them, you don't <laughs> have to true. own them, you That's can true. just come drive them. I, I think it's going to influence your car buying research. I mean, where else can you come and drive trucks if you're into trucks or sports cars, but at a high level, and we're still searching for, for those dynamics that we talk about on the podcast. We're, we're searching there to be found here at a high level, maybe at an aspirational level, but yeah. I think this yeah. is all in the name of research, actually. We well, have the opportunity to actually know what these cars are like to drive. And you also have yeah. that opportunity to go, I can drive. You might not be able to drive that well, but you could come <laughs> here and they have great instructors and you can actually Absolutely. learn to do this. Yeah, if you don't think you're going to learn about yourself and your, you know, your tolerance for speed, all those kinds of things, you absolutely are going to learn. It's going to burrow into, you're going to want more, but think about this. Speed Vegas has now democratized these cars. It's sort of like an exotic petting zoo for enthusiasts. What an experience. Thank you, Speed Vegas, your entire crew, the owners. This is, this is something to come out here and work on your laps. You can not only work on your driving skill, and I bet you could convince these instructors to give you more input on your driving. You've got to figure this out for yourself. You've got to taste these for yourself. You know, everybody wonders what they're like to drive. But, you know, when it's starting to make you sweat and demand more of you in corners, that's what I'm looking for out of my supercar. The truth is, I should just shut up and enjoy, shouldn't I? Because that's really the reason you come out here. And if you get tired of driving, you could try a drift car ride-along. 